questions. Before we move to the next item of business, members will wish to join me in welcoming to the gallery Her Excellency Ms Janice Charette, High Commissioner from Canada to the UK. Now, the next item of business is a statement by John Swinney on the Scottish Government's Improvement Plan for Education. Um, at the end, we'll be taking questions. There'll be no interruptions during the statement. Can I just encourage and exhort all members uh, to keep their questions short? The opening two questioners get additional time. After that, all questions should be succinct where possible. And the same goes for the Minister's answers where possible. Uh, I call on John Swinney to speak. Officer, the Government has today published data from the school census, statistical information on the achievement of curriculum for excellence levels by children and young people at school, local authority and national level, and the 2016 National Improvement Framework Evidence Report. Taking the school census first, the statistics for 2016 tell us that there were 253 more full-time equivalent teachers than last year. Of those, 160 were directly funded by the Scottish Government's Attainment Scotland Fund. Class sizes in pre-1 to P3 are the same as last year and broadly static across primary school. The pupil-teacher ratio remains unchanged for the third successive year at 13.7, in line with the Scottish Government's agreement with local authorities. Most children are achieving the expected curriculum for excellence level for their stage based on teacher professional judgment. All young people are expected to have achieved at least third level by the end of S3 and a record 666 school buildings are in the top condition category of good and 84% of school buildings in the good or satisfactory condition. I very much welcome the rise in teacher numbers compared to last year, the fact that class sizes are broadly stable and that the pupil-teacher ratio has been maintained. This is all good news, particularly when Parliament considers the teacher recruitment challenges being faced in some areas of the country. Secondly, the statistical information on the achievement of curriculum for excellence levels by children and young people at school, local authority and national level is published today for the very first time. This data is in direct response to the OECD recommendation last year that we develop a more robust evidence base available right across the system, especially about learning outcomes and progress. This illuminates where excellence already exists and where there is more to do, both to target resources where they are needed most and to ensure that children are getting the right support at the right time. As this is the first time we have gathered this data, it is being published under the official label of experimental statistics. And as with many new data collections, it will need further development before its accuracy and quality can be guaranteed. It is also clear, for example, that some issues remain around the consistency of teachers' professional judgments across different local authority areas. Most notably, it is clear from the S3 data that there are differing approaches to the assessment of third and fourth level. Education Scotland and local authorities have a vital role to play in providing the support needed to deliver greater consistency in this area. A national programme of moderation activity is underway to build a shared understanding on these questions. Even taking these inconsistencies into account, the data shows that significant improvements are required in some local authorities and real challenges exist in delivering the progress in literacy and numeracy that we seek. I would encourage parents to consider the school level information that is now available and to discuss it with their child's school. The data provides a basis upon which to build our knowledge about how children are progressing at school. The variation in some of the data does, however, highlight the value that standardised assessment will bring, providing teachers with nationally consistent data to help inform their professional judgment. This data reinforces the messages we took from the PISA results and is consistent with what we already know from the Scottish Survey of, Learning, of Literacy and Numeracy. Most children and young people are progressing well through the school system, but for some, overall performance drops and the poverty-related attainment gap widens. There is much to be proud of in Scottish education. We need to remain focused on and committed to curriculum for excellence, and we need to continue to implement the reforms that we are putting in place. That is the course that we established after the SSLN data, and that is the course that we intend to continue to take. It follows, therefore, that the 2017 National Improvement Framework and Improvement Plan, the third document that I'm publishing today, reinforces that approach. The vision 
The key priorities and the drivers for improvement we identified in January this year have stakeholder support and remain as true and as important now as they did then. The improvement plan sets out what we need to do at all levels in the system to deliver better outcomes for our children and young people. It brings together in one place all of the improvement activity from the delivery plan that I, I published last summer and the Curriculum for Excellence Implementation Plan published in the autumn. It takes into account the information published today in the evidence report and set out our, sets out our plans for improvement. It will serve as the single definitive plan for securing educational improvement, providing absolute clarity of purpose for all who are involved in education. To drive improvement for children and young people, we need a shared understanding across all parts of the education system of our key strengths and the key challenges that we face and of the actions we are taking forward to deliver improvement. I encourage everyone involved in school education to make the priorities of the National Improvement Framework a reality in their school. Teachers have a key role to play in closing the attainment gap and are central to achieving our vision of excellence and equity in Scottish education. I'm committed to ensuring we have the right number of teachers with the right skills in the right places to educate our young people. We know that the quality of teaching is a key factor in improving children's learning and the outcomes that they achieve. I want teachers to have time to teach, to plan their working lives and to reflect on their own professional learning needs. I want teachers to be able to enjoy their jobs and I want teaching to be seen as an attractive and a rewarding career choice. I have already moved decisively to free teachers to teach by removing unnecessary bureaucracy and workload. We have set out clearly and concisely what teachers should and shouldn't focus on. But I will continue to take all possible measures to lessen workloads, tackle bureaucracy and enable more, and enable more time for learning and teaching for the benefit of all. As part of that work, next week Education Scotland will release their new websites, which radically streamline the level of guidance, resources and materials available to teachers and other practitioners to support improvement. This equates to a reduction of 90% in terms of volume and all materials have been reviewed and updated to meet current needs, enabling teachers to have ready access to the support, information and guidance that they need. I do recognise that some councils still face challenges in teacher recruitment, as do universities in recruiting teaching students. I'm focused on addressing any barriers to the recruitment of teachers and will work with our partners to address issues of staffing supply and capacity at a national level, while maintaining Scottish teaching as a graduate profession. On the 30th of November, I announced a package of innovative new routes into teaching, and these will be ready for an intake of students in 2017. This includes accelerated routes, more distance learning opportunities and an increase in joint degrees combining primary teaching with specialism like chemistry. We will build on last year's successful recruitment campaign to encourage more people into teaching with a particular focus on hard to fill subjects and areas that have difficulty in recruiting. We are also continuing to support teachers' professional learning through further investment of £1 million in 2016-17 in master's level learning. In considering any new routes into teaching, I can assure Parliament that I will work with the General Teaching Council for Scotland to ensure that quality is assured and the next generation of teachers will be qualified, skilled, motivated and ready to teach. <coughs> Presiding officer, I've visited many schools and spoken to hundreds of teachers and children since I took up this post. I know that in Scottish education today, we have hundreds of thousands of good pupils been taught by tens of thousands of good teachers in thousands of good schools. I want to build on this and invite everyone in this chamber to join us in that effort. There is for all of us a moral imperative to deliver excellence and equity, and we have the clear policy framework in place to deliver this approach. The principles of curriculum for excellence are the right ones. Throughout its development, there has been unanimous agreement within the parliament and across the education sector that it is the right approach. In its review of Curriculum for Excellence in 2015, the OECD recognised the strong, powerful and enduring characteristics of our curriculum, commended the bold reform we are driving forward and urged us to continue on our reform journey. Our International Council of Education Advisors have further endorsed our approach to education in Scotland and have provided advice about where we need to improve. We are on course to deliver these improvements through our current actions. 
The collaboration in our education system is one of its great strengths and it is essential that we work together to deliver the improvements required to make Scotland's education world class. There is much to be proud of in Scottish education, but more must also be done with pace and with urgency, with every single one of our teachers around the country, with our professional associations, with our parent organisations, with government agencies and with our local authority partners to ensure that we close the attainment gap that has so long blighted our country in Scottish education. Thank you. I would ask members to press their request to speak buttons if they wish to ask a question. I call on Liz Smith. Uh, thank you. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for a prior sight of a statement, a statement which follows statistics published this morning, which were proof, further proof, I may say, that the attainment gap is as wide as ever, despite the promises that have been made by the Scottish Government. So could the Cabinet Secretary tell this Parliament exactly why some of the top performing local authorities can get around 70% of their S3 pupils to level four in the Curriculum for Excellence, whereas many other local authorities which have been performing well in the past can only get very low le levels uh, to that level four. If that is to do with their structures and timings of CFE implementation being so different, why is it that that is happening? Is that not more evidence of the problems which the SNP has allowed to develop about the delivery of curriculum for excellence in the middle to senior phases. And would he not agree that many parents have a right to be very angry about these differences? Mm -hmm. And secondly, would he accept that the long-term decline in teacher numbers in secondary school is a big part of the reason why so many schools are finding the delivery of CFE in its middle and senior years phases so very difficult? Cabinet Secretary. First of all, presiding officer, um, on the question of the attainment gap, uh, the statistics that have been published this morning um, confirm uh, what we have long known is the existence of the attainment gap and the fact that that becomes um, more acute as young people uh, proceed through the education system. And um, that is precisely why the government is taking the steps that it's taking uh, so in such a focused way to tackle the attainment gap. But for completeness, Liz Smith should recognise that the data which was published by PISA last week confirmed that the progress that had been made in the early part of this administration to close the attainment gap has been sustained in the most recent PISA data. So I think for completeness, uh, and I'm sure uh, Liz Smith would want to make sure that her point to Parliament was uh, made completely, um, I make that point. The second point is about differential performance uh, between schools and local authorities. And um, I think, with the greatest of respect, I think Liz Smith has got the tone of her question entirely wrong. Because what the, statistic, what the statistics and the data demonstrate is the need for us to be focused on a culture of perpetual improvement. That's what drives my thinking about Scottish education. And that's why this information has been published, to enable us to have a focused, a focused discussion about how we can deliver progress. And what the data demonstrates is, of course, there are areas of the country that can deliver stronger performance than other areas of the country, and schools within authorities that can deliver more progress than other schools of a comparable background within uh, local authority areas. And it is vital that we focus on the improvement journey to ensure that all young people are able to experience excellence and equity in their education. And I would remind, and, and, and this point gets, I think, to the heart of one of the fundamental contradictions of Liz Smith's arguments on education. Liz Smith argues for variability and flexibility among schools. But when the schools exercise that flexibility and variability, Liz Smith comes to this parliament and asks me to lay down the law and to stop them doing so. So I just, I just invite Liz Smith to reflect on the fact that she has put forward an utterly inconsistent proposition in her arguments today. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, and the final thing I would say, the third point I'd make is this. Uh, Liz, on a day like this, where the, the number of teachers in our schools has increased, and some of it has increased because of the direct investment of the Scottish Government through the attainment fund, I would have thought this would be a day for Liz Smith to welcome the fact there has been a growth in teacher numbers across Scotland. Ian Gray to be followed by Patrick Harvey. 
Thank you, and uh, thanks to the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement. Let me indeed welcome the increase in primary teacher numbers, uh, but remind the Cabinet Secretary that we are still 4,000 teachers down, uh, and he has a long way to go to reverse the damage of the past 10 years. And that is the message, surely, of the attainment data too. Uh, one quarter of children leave primary school unable to read at the expected level, one third fail to achieve the expected numeracy levels. The attainment gap between the rich and the rest uh, rises at every stage. This is the measure of 10 years of SNP failure, as were last week's PISA results. Now we have an improvement framework, an implementation plan, a delivery plan, a governance review, and now a performance improvement plan. No doubt there is a delivery performance framework review report in the pipeline. <laughs> but what we need is a promise to stop the cuts and an apology to children, parents and teachers for the past 10 years. Can we have that? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, first of all, um, on the question of teacher numbers, um, I, I'm, I'm glad that Ian Gray um, has managed to get somewhere close to acknowledging the fact that teacher numbers have actually gone up today, and that's welcome. It's a, it's a, it's a significant progress that Mr Gray was even able to acknowledge that. Even he managed to get further ahead than the Conservatives managed to get today. Um, but I would make the point to Ian Gray that much of the reason why the teacher numbers have increased is because of the stance that I took in my former role to protect teacher numbers despite the protestations of many Labour local authorities yes. who wanted to reduce teacher numbers further yes. and I wouldn't allow them to do so. So perhaps Mr Gray would get some clarity and consistency in his party's arguments because when I meet local authority leaders from the Labour Party, they moan about the way in which the parliamentary Labour Party um, agitates about teacher numbers when they want to be given a free hand to reduce teacher numbers. So perhaps Mr Gray would get that point straight. Now, Mr Gray accurately, accurately explains the data at P7, and he is correct in the data that he puts forward. But again, for completeness, I would have thought Mr Gray would have then looked at what are the achievement levels at S3. Because at S3, what we see that, that young people able to achieve third and fourth level is at uh, combined is at 86% in reading, 86% in numeracy, 87% in listening and talking, 84% in writing. So as, a, as, a, as an illustration of young people progressing through the education system, I would have thought that would have been a more complete measure to put in place. And finally, um, Mr Gray um, made reference to a series of documents. What I've done, if, if he was listening to my statement, he would have heard me say that uh, I have consolidated into one document as a simple reference point for everybody involved in education, the measures required to be taken on improvement. It's what's called trying to focus the agenda to make sure we can unite around that agenda of progress and improvement. That's exactly what the government is focused on doing, and that is what we're going to deliver for Scottish education. Patrick Harvey to be followed by Tavish Scott, and please, succinct questions and succinct answers from now on, please. Thank you. The, the government said it doesn't want to return to crude league tables, but as it moves ahead with standardised assessment, isn't it inevitable that that's the way the data will end up being used? And doesn't it stand in contradiction to the goal of te trusting teachers to know who in their class needs a bit of extra help? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, on, on the last point, um, I, I do want to uh, trust teachers to make those judgments in the classroom, because that's the only place that those judgments can be made. But I want teachers to be well informed by reliable and consistent mechanisms of assessment to inform that judgment. And that's what standardised assessment is all about. And um, I certainly value, and I think teachers will value, the information that is now available around comparative performance to identify how improvement can be strengthened in individual schools. And that's what this agenda is about. I'm not interested in crude league, ta league tables, and I've not presented them in that fashion. What I'm interested in doing, what I'm interested in doing 
is giving the information that can drive an agenda of improvement within Scottish education, and the parents and the pupils of Scotland would expect nothing less of their government. Tavish Scott, to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Presiding Officer. Is the Government's answer to the international figures that were published last week uh, showing Scotland's educational performance is falling. Uh, national standardised assessments for pupils that the Cabinet Secretary just talked about and reform to schools and local government, but not to the government's own quangles who've had policy and implementation responsibility, along, of course, with ministers, for nine years for curriculum for excellence. Does not the OECD uh, conduct a review? Did they not conduct a review into curriculum for excellence rather than an evaluation? And finally, on the improvement uh, framework that the Cabinet Secretary just talked about, I can find 13 new improvement activities. How is that consistent with the very points that have been made about simplification and easing bureaucracy? Cabinet Secretary. Um, if Mr Scott, I'm sure Mr Scott has looked at the government's review material, um, I, well I know he has, um, but because he will find in it that uh, the government poses questions about the role of all of the bodies involved in education, including the um, bodies such as Education Scotland and the Scottish Qualifications Authority. So um, it's, uh, it's, a com it's a comprehensive review of governance within education. In relation to Mr Scott's point about the responsibility for implementing curriculum for excellence, I, I, I totally acknowledge and accept the government's role in the uh, delivery and implementation of curriculum for excellence. But I think one of the points that's missed in this debate frequently is that, and it's the point made actually in the submission to the governance review published last week by the Educational Institute of Scotland, that the approach to Scottish education has always been taken forward as a partnership approach, where professional associations, local authorities, professional bodies are all involved in the discussions about the delivery of curriculum changes and educational improvements. So, yes, I'm prepared to accept my share of the responsibility as a government minister, but I simply point out that that responsibility has been exercised in a collaborative fashion across many organisations within Scotland. And the final point is about um, the issue around the OECD and, and, and how that relates to the improvement framework. Mr Scott is, um, is literally correct that the OECD carried out a review and not an evaluation. Um, they told us that we needed to get more data in place to enable us to undertake that evaluation, which is precisely what I have done this morning with the publication of the school-based assessment uh, approach. But what the OECD also said to us was that we had to take a number of steps to strengthen Scottish education, which is what's in the improvement plan. And I'm, I'm not going to make any apology for having, you know, some people are criticising me for applying far too much pace to the reform agenda within Scottish education. I make no apology for that because we have to get on with this. We have to get on with taking the necessary steps to improve Scottish education and the improvement plan enables us to do that. Jenny Ruth to be followed by Ross Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I would like to remind members I am the Parliamentary Liaison Officer for Education before asking my question. As a former teacher, I welcome the moves taken to reduce workloads and bureaucracy, and I'm sure that the new Education Scotland websites, which streamline guidance, will be very welcome by teachers. Could the Cabinet Secretary outline how Education Scotland will monitor the uptake of the guidance, resources and materials which will be available to teachers next week? Cabinet Secretary. Um, officer, the, um, the, the reduction in the volume of material has um, been at my request to ensure that the uh, the materials that are available to enhance educational development around the country are um, visible and compelling to members of the teaching profession, and I hope that those reforms are of assistance in that respect. Um, in terms of the monitoring, obviously, Education Scotland track uh, significant uh, uh, use of the, uh, of the materials, uh, and they will also form part of their dialogue with schools in relation to encouraging and improving educational practice around the country. Uh, in the most recent uh, guidance that I issued to schools in August, Education Scotland were able to advise me of um, the, the very significant uh, levels of interest taken in that, those materials by uh, the teaching profession from the data that was available, and I look forward to that being replicated with the reforms that we're undertaking. Ross Thompson to be followed by James Dornan. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, on page three of his statement, the Cabinet Secretary refers to the scheme he announced on the 30th of November. For clarity, could the Cabinet Secretary advise the Chamber how many of the current level of teacher vacancies he expects that scheme to fill? And with an accelerated or fast track route into teaching, what measures will be put in place to ensure that teachers are sufficiently qualified, given that teachers have already expressed concern that there's not been enough focus on literacy and numeracy as part of the current teacher training? Cabinet Secretary. Um, the first point in relation to um, Mr Thompson's questions um, is that I, my expectation would be approximately 200 places would be filled by the new routes into teaching that I announced on the 30th of November. In relation to his second point, um, obviously the design of the uh, approaches to encourage a swifter um, route into teaching um, will have to be will be designed by the colleges of education, who are of course independent bodies that are not controlled by the government, they are independent educational bodies, um, but they have to design those courses to the satisfaction of the General Teaching Council for Scotland that they will produce graduates that will be able to satisfy the standards that would be expected by the General Teaching Council for proficiency within Scottish education. Uh, so those issues will be entirely in the hands of the General Teaching Council and the colleges of education to be assured that the quality uh, of uh, individuals that emerge from those uh, particular routes uh, meet the standards that we would expect. James Dornan, to followed by Monica Lennon. Thank you, President Officer. While the news that so many young people are achieving the expected uh, curriculum for excellence level is welcome, we want a world-leading education system uh, and to do to end with more schools and local authorities to support young people to achieve beyond their expected level. I'd appreciate if the Cabinet Secretary could outline to me, both as a constituency MSP and as the convener of the Education and Skills Committee, what evidence he has that this is happening. Cabinet Secretary. <coughs> what I, well, certainly what we've put in place is a, a, a framework of data that will enable us to see on a sustained basis the progress that young people are making. And it is more data, more visibly available than has ever been the case in the past. So we'll be able to see the progress that young people are making at a school level, and that will help to inform um, the, uh, the, the, the steps that are necessary to improve performance at local level. The, the data demonstrates some significant vari variation in the performance of uh, different local authority areas. Um, that should be the subject and the focus for improvement, and the National Improvement Plan is designed to assist in uh, enabling schools to be able to tackle uh, that performance uh, and to ensure that young people are able to fulfil their potential. Monica Lennon to be followed by F Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. There are almost 72,000 more primary pupils with additional support needs than in 2007. A better understanding of the individual needs of pupils is, of course, welcome. But the number of learning support and additional support need teachers in primary schools in this period has decreased by 31 per cent, a fact the Cabinet Secretary didn't highlight in his statement. But he did say he's committed to ensuring the right number of teachers with the right skills in the right places. When can children with additional support needs expect to see this commitment fulfilled? Cabinet Secretary. As part of the government's agenda to ensure that we get it right for every child, we focus on the, the needs and uh, the requirements of individual children as they present themselves within the system. And as, we, as I've discussed with, uh, with Parliament before, um, we, we have a presumption about um, mainstreaming, but we are looking to ensure that we are, the correct judgments have been made about the educational situations for young people uh, being appropriate to meet their needs. Now, the, the one other point I would add to the point that Monica Lennon has made is, of course, it, between 2007 and the current period, there was a very significant change to the legislative framework in place in relation to children with additional support needs, which broadened significantly the definitions of those young people, the young people that would be defined as having additional support needs. And those additional support needs will vary, um, it will, will be across a much broader range than would have been the case under the previous arrangements that Monica Lane set out. Fulton McGregor to be followed by Jeremy Balfour. Thank you, President Officer. Can I take this opportunity to thank the Cabinet Secretary 
and indeed as ministers for uh, recent visits to my constituency and seen firsthand some of the innovative work that goes on in, in the schools in Coatbridge and Chryson. Could the Cabinet Secretary outline how many schools have been built or refurbished since 2007-2008 and how this compares with the previous administration and explain what impact he expects this to have on attainment? Cabinet Secretary. Um, President Officer, um, over uh, 600 schools have either been uh, rebuilt or refurbished since the Government came to office in 2007, which has delivered the type of improvements and enhancements in the learning environment that are experienced by young, pe young people the length and breadth of the country. And we are now in a situation where well over 80 per cent of young people are being taught in um, either good or satisfactory educational environments. Uh, that is testament to the investment that has been made by the Government. Jeremy Balfour. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary said in his statement that the data shows that significant improvements are required in some local authorities and real challenges exist in delivering the progress of literacy and numeracy. Uh, that is definitely a statement that we would agree with. What will the Cabinet Secretary do in practical terms to give that support to local authorities and to local schools? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the well, the government has set out the steps that we consider to be appropriate in improving performance within education. They are set out in the National Improvement Framework, and we would encourage all local authorities to take uh, those steps forward. Um, secondly, uh, the government has made available resources to assist in closing the attainment gap to a wide variety of local authorities in Scotland and, of course, uh, we await the conclusions of the budget process on Thursday to give us further information on the delivery of assistance to a wider cohort of pupils as a consequence. Uh, so the Government is focused on ensuring that we play our part in strengthening performance in educational achievement at local level within Scotland. Thank you. That concludes our statement. I would just point out that despite my exhortations and encouragement, there are four members who did not get in there, so I would just ask all members to reflect on that. Please ask a question, maybe one sen sentence beforehand, one sentence, then a question. I'm sure the Minister is also listening to <laughs> encouragement. We move on to the next item of business, uh, and we'll just take a few moments.